And this is Daniel Pete. You got a hand for us? Uh, yeah, so I got a hand, a 1-3 match the stack game at uh, Turning Stone Resort and Casino. We're 1,300 effective. I have 1,800, and the main villain has uh, 1,300. That's my first casino that I ever stepped foot in, actually, in my life. When I was 18 years old, I took the bus when I was a freshman in college to Turning Stone. They didn't have poker. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, I've done the uh, I've done that before for sure. We take that that sketchy bus station in Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, right in downtown. Absolutely. All right, so thirteen hundred effective. Um, so thirteen hundred effective. Uh-huh. Under the gun opens to fifteen. Um, the button, who was like kind of a loose and splashy player, uh, he calls the fifteen, and I am in the small blind with Jack of Clubs, Jack of Hearts. Okay. And I three bet it to 75. So you go to 75, which is 4x plus a call. Yes. Uh, Should I be going bigger, playing deeper? I mean, from out of position, yeah, you're definitely incentivized, I think, unless you get super deep to go wider. But I mean, you still did 4x plus a call. So you could go Mm -hmm. larger, but I mean, you, you didn't go to like 50, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um. So the big blind cold calls the 75. <laughs> okay. Which was interesting. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> to preface this hand too, this guy was very much uh, targeting me the entire night, which I'm kind of used to at Turning Stone because I'm younger. I'm only 21. So a lot of the older players like to target me because they think I'm just, you know, some young dumb kid. The initial under the gun uh, razor, he folds and the button folds out too. Uh, so I'm going heads up out of position to a flop. There's 180 in. Just the guy that Cole called. Yes. It's just me and the uh, cold caller. And okay. The big blind. Okay. So the flop comes 10 of diamonds, five of clubs, four of clubs. 10 of diamonds, five of clubs, four of clubs. Okay. And I bet 80. So hero bets 80 into 180. Okay. I, I sized up a little bit from like I guess the standard one third sizing just because my hand can use some protection. Um, I mean, it's not. It's see, not I don't a, even know what his cold calling range looks like. Right, it's not a uh, crazy disconnected board. I mean, it, it, I mean, excuse me, it's not a super connected board. It's disconnected. So, I mean, wh- if I have a guy who just cold called three bets in the big blind, I got to tell you, I might even go like close to full pot here because the guy's terrible. Unless he's trapping you, right? Mm-hmm. I yeah, might go definitely. 120. Which is possible. Yeah, Which I mean, is possible I, with this particular opponent. I mean, the other he, thing, too, is, is that... Get, in for, I want to see 1,500. Right. The other thing, though, too, was specific, specifically with jacks, though, you know, you start to think about what are... Because I might take that back. Because, you know, if you had aces, you might go super large. Because what is a cold calling range usually look like of three bats in between? Middle, middling pairs. Yeah, nine yeah. cents, jacks, queens, so... Might not be actually the best board mm-hmm. for you because of the 10x, but that's as the theory goes. Okay, so you go 80, okay. Uh, and the big blind calls. All right. So 340. So now the pot is 340. Mm-hmm. Going to a turn, which is the king of hearts. And I thought this was such a good card for my range that I didn't really want to check it over, even out of position. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really like my sizing. I went 150. It was very like a very middling sizing. But I do think that there's still things to get value from. Well, this is also interesting because there's another hand in there that we didn't talk about that cold calls three bets sometimes that might get here. What do you think that is? Ace King. Right. Ace King that would definitely mm-hmm. call a bet on the flop. So while this is definitely a good card traditionally for the guy with the betting lead here, and you could mathematically show that sort of a a bet here on the turn might show a profit over the long term. I don't think this would be a card that I'm necessarily over betting. Usually there's got to be a couple sizes on the turn. It's not just check over bet. So I think you could one third it here, but I kind of tend to want to check your hand and see what's going on here. The other thing too about live play your hand is so in between and it's so weird. The more I think about this, cause it's a cold call three bets when he calls the flop. It's just like th- some of these hands like nines, eights, something like that, that cold calls, you are just going to get a fold out now when you bet. So you're really looking at a 10 here 
whether ace 10 suited calls and maybe like front door club draws ace king connects with the king and um unless you're trying to get specifically queen queen to fold here i think that i would probably check here or bet like a hundred to 120 well whatever one third is uh, 150 might be a little bit size large, but hero bets 150. Okay. And the big blind calls again. So big blind calls, and now the pot is 640, right? Yes. Okay. So the river is the three of clubs bringing in uh, the front door flush draw. I check. I think that that's very, very, st- I think that's very standard here for hero to check, right? I think you've run out of value. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, don't don't really beat too much. Um, well, it's not that you don't beat. It's not that you. I mean, you beat like a ten, and you beat like a stubborn nines. But those that would be very very optimistic to get called here. It's not necessarily that you don't beat much. It's what is calling you that's worse. That's what you have to think about here at the end. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I check, and. The big blind, without hesitation, uh, jams 1070. What? All in for 1070? Yes. Wow, that's that's crazy. And then that's a crazy sizing. I mean, sure, you've got jacks with the jack of clubs here, so you bluff, you block some of the flush draw bluffs, but... I mean, like I said, the hand is already a little bit off the rail. Unless you knew this guy was just a total maniac, and he was like a... Dr- like super drunk or something like this i mean i think i live to see another day sure it's a very polarizing bet you know probably representing flushes but you know ace jack of, well he can't have ace jack of clubs you're the jack of clubs ace queen of clubs uh, ace ten of clubs ace king of clubs something like that thinking that they want to try to get you know that you're not going to fold aces or god forbid if you have pocket kings or ace king or something like that because i mean it doesn't make a, i mean six seven comes in too but the guy did cold call three bets. I mean, what is he bluffing with here if you're ever really considering calling? Yeah, so I the reason part of the reason why I wanted to send this hand in particular in was because I'm not somebody who really resorts to live tells ever. Okay. But this particular player had pretty much been doing the same thing. He was, you know, pretty pretty in tune, I would say. But in this particular hand, once he made that snap jam, he totally changed his his body language and his demeanor and was kind of giving off that um, I'm like, you know, weak means strong, strong means weak, and was trying to portray himself that he was super strong, um, which I don't like using. I don't like using live tales personally because they're not always reliable. But uh, part of the reason that I wanted this hand to be analyzed was because I used it as a tiebreaker and I did put the chips in. What did you use as a tiebreaker again? I'm sorry. I'm just saying live tells in general. Just seeing that this guy, and I knew he had been targeting me for a long, uh, long stretch of time. He was just constantly getting into pots whenever I'd raise with whatever, and then he would always fold. Um, so I knew he was getting in there with a whole lot of junk. And he definitely had the ability to bluff, which was something that I took into account when making this call i mean i guess but let me just ask you um daniel right Mm -hmm. so what what like what is his hand here like what gets here as a bluff (laughs) i think it was just such a polarizing bet that it was either to me like he had pocket tens or absolute an air ball bluff I mean, but again, I, I, I mean, I guess I here's the thing. Like I tend to look at live tells in terms of bet pacing when something changes at the end. And certainly something has changed here at the end. Um, when someone's trying to represent something, if they snap jam, but that's usually when they have the betting lead, meaning they've raised you in this particular situation, like post flop, say you got raised on the flop and then the guy just continued to like pile on turn and then just pile on river and this might not even be the best example, say the river was the king of clubs. So it paired the board and also brought the flush in. In those types of examples where someone might be representing a draw that got there 
or like they boat it up. If they just snap jam it, 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 it seems a little bit fishy to me because the river is such a changing card. All hands, whether they would be bluffs or hands that made flushes or hands that made full houses, would seem to pause to make to try to think about their sizing. So when everybody when any whenever anybody paces in a way where they have no regard to the river that changes the knots, I always get a little bit curious. Now, <laughs> I did that last night at Chasers and I got totally fucked, which we'll go over in the podcast. <laughs> I made a call with Ace High and <laughs> I was wrong. So it's not always true. But I mean, if you're just sort of telling me, well, I called because he was just floating and floating. I mean, it's it's a rare, rare, rare case where uh, a guy is going to be putting this amount of money in at one three. He's jamming his entire stack at one three for um, for a thousand seventy as a call, call and a jam. So I, I mean, I just think six seven suited. Fiance Lance says no flush. I mean, are they calling three bets cold with six seven suited? I mean, I guess it's I guess it's possible. Go Bird says insta jams are fishy. And J Henry twenty four says I'm not ruling out Ace ten off from this villain. I, I don't know, guys. Ace ten like I had seen Ace ten with the Ace of Claw. I just just feel I feel like that's pretty far up the range now it could be a hand like Ace Queen or Ace Jack with the Ace of Clubs that would make more sense to me than ace 10 with the ace of clubs and of course those would be call it actually makes a lot of sense ace queen with the ace of clubs which is you know cold calls preflop with the ace of clubs picks up a gutter on the turn and now is representing like they have it at least we can find a hand because on the surface i was like what hand i mean that hand makes sense to me yeah so after i put the chips in so you, the, you called. the villain asked me, so what, yeah, I called, uh, the villain asks, so what do you got? And he doesn't want to show. Uh-huh. And I say, I, I have pocket jacks and he goes, seriously. And then he throws them into the muck. So you never found out what he had. I didn't see what he had that day, but uh-huh. I actually played with him again a couple nights ago. Uh-huh. And he told me he had exactly ace, ace queen with the ace of clubs. And you didn't tell me that he had that right in the email. I mean, I just looking back at it. No, I just, the it, the email is like outdated. Oh, mm-hmm. right. It was a couple of weeks ago. I remember. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, that makes sense. That is a one bluff that does make sense. At least we can come up with something. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I would just. Yeah. I mean, this is, by the way, you got a, your smoke detector has a low battery there. Um, Daniel. Get that fixed. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that carbon monoxide or smoke, but uh, I mean, at least we can find a hand and it, it is quite polarizing, but here's the thing. Everything goes off the rails preflop. I, I mean, I've done a lot of that stuff recently, content about like hand rating and ma- making a checklist to pay attention to when playing against unknowns. Anytime somebody cold calls a three bet, it is a little bit off the rails. Now, this is not quite as bad as limp cold calling a three bet, which I saw a lot of last night. Um, this is just a cold call. Even I cold called a three bet one time last night, even though I knew I, it was just, I ended up folding. I had tens and the guy was just, he had never three bet. I should have just folded to a single three bet. It just seemed icky. And then he ended up having aces and the other guy had Kings. I was able to get out of there just to the cold call. But you know, even then in the big blind, it's just, it is a little bit, it's a little bit odd. Like I said, it's a little bit off the rails for a cold call from a big the guy, especially with the guy behind. But at the same time, sometimes you get to revert back to. I mean, that's a big jam in that game, right? Isn't this going to be a big pot in this game? Oh, definitely. I mean, well, I would say that the average pot, like the pots definitely get into four figures pretty frequently. It plays more like a 5'10 than a 1'3. Uh-huh. And it's just like 1'3 caliber players. For half of it, and I'd say like five ten caliber players for the other half of the player pool. Hmm. Uh, but the pots do get big. It, it plays definitely more like a five ten game. But do they have a two five match stack there too? Or no? They don't. Well, they might, but it doesn't run um, often if it ever does. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much, mm-hmm. Daniel. Interesting call. Yeah. Thank you.